Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we continue our Commitment 2019 Hot Seat Debates. Up tonight, the race for State Senate District 3. Now, this is an open seat. The reason that man on your screen, State Senator J.P. Morrell, is barred by term limits from seeking re-election. The district is really one of the area's most diverse, covering Gentilly, the Lower Ninth Ward, parts of St. Bernard, and parts of the West Bank, of Jefferson Parish. Two men have made the runoff. Both are Democrats. Both are here tonight. They're both current state representatives. They are State Representative John Bagnaris and State Representative Joseph Joe Bowie. We appreciate your time. Thank you for attending. We're going to start off with a brief opening statement. We go alphabetically. So therefore, Mr. Bagnaris, we began with you. You have 60 seconds to make an opening statement. Thank you, Travis. I'm State Representative John Bagnaris. I'm currently representing District 100 in New Orleans East. I'm running for the Senate District 3, which encompasses St. Bernard, Jefferson, and Orleans Parishes. I'm running for the Senate to give our children and grandchildren a 21st century education and give our teachers a pay raise. Um, I am and want to ensure that our children after that education can get a job here and not have to go to Texas or Georgia like my daughter did when she graduated from LSU, have to go to Dallas to get a job. I want to improve our roads and bridges and so we can get around the city and the state more efficiently um, and lower our tax, our insurance rates. I'm running because I want to put more everyday people into politics than special interest groups. I thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bagnaris. Mr. Bowie, you have one minute, 60 seconds to make an opening statement. Well, firstly, let me thank you, Travis, for affording us the opportunity to share with the viewers uh, our candidates here for the District 3 seat. Uh, I'm Joe Bowie, and I am also representing District 97. I've had the pleasure of doing that for two terms and had basically two mechanisms to provide some innovative and effective leadership, specifically as floor leader for the governor and as a two-term chairman of the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus, I have been intricately involved in working not only with the governor, but also working with members across the aisle to solve some of our state's most pressing problems. That one problem being that $2 billion deficit that we actually finally done. It took us eight sessions to do it, but we actually now have a $500 million surplus. Uh, that is a very critical kind of leadership piece because it affords me the opportunity to work across the aisle, and that's the only way you can get resolutions to those problems that face our state in general, as well as District 3. I'm known as one who not only is an advocate of social and economic justice, but the legislation that I've proposed over the last two terms reflect that as well. All right, we're going to start this question with you, Mr. Bowie. You have 60 seconds. The district is very diverse, to put it mildly. You have old people, young people, black people, white people. You have Republicans who support the president and Democrats who don't support President Donald Trump. If elected in 60 seconds, how do you best represent this very diverse district? Yes, great question. Uh, as I said earlier, one of, one of my skill sets is the ability to build coalitions. Uh, as a mantra, I am one who advocates social and economic justice, meaning equity and fairness for all. And so what that simply means, because we have a tri-parish district, it simply means that uh, I have the experience to know how to build the coalitions, one, to work on the general problems of each of the three districts, as well as the specific, me, specific and unique problems of the particular parishes. For instance, uh, there is infrastructures that are common to all three parishes, that is flood drainage and um, uh, levees. And so because we have this Louisiana Flood Protection Authority, which already intricately involves those three parishes, that's one common ground. I also have the ability to work with those leaders in the three parishes to bring them together, to work with their respective constituents to address their concerns. All right, Mr. Bignaris, same question in 60 seconds. It's a very unique and diverse district. If elected, how do you work to represent all the people in this very diverse district? Well, the, the district is diverse, and for St. Bernard, they have uh, two senators representing them. I think we should try to get them into one Senate district. It's a double-edged sword for them because they have two senators to vote for them. But in the past, one has been very conservative, who lives in St. Tammany Parish, and the other one, Mr. Morrell, has been a more of a moderate. So we have all the same problems in uh, drainage, flooding, uh, 
the levees, and uh, I think that they should have a person from St. Bernard put on a port of St. Bernard that an Orleans uh, legislator or a senator should appoint somebody from St. Bernard to that board. All right, we have a question coming up about St. Bernard Parish, since that's in your district. We're going to get to it in a second. Mr. Bagnaris, we're going to start with you. Another 60-second answer here for you. There's a housing crisis in New Orleans. This district represents the Bywater, the Marigny, and the Lower Ninth Ward. If elected, what's your plan for affordable housing in all three of those areas? Affordable housing is going to be a real unique because we have to come in with some special programs for uh, underprivileged people who have poor or poor and cannot afford some of these houses and uh, out to pick out one area to trim May that has uh, property value has gone up to five hundred six hundred thousand dollars where some people who live there for 40 years cannot afford to pay the taxes on us so we have to come up with some unique programs to, to deal with that all right mr. Bowie same question in 60 seconds there's a housing crisis in the city of New Orleans this district covers the Bywater, the Marigny, and the Ninth Ward. If elected, what is your plan for the housing crisis and affordable housing in that district? I think we must have a, a multiphasic approach. First and foremost, we need to create incentives sure. for those who can afford affordable housing to our residents. It is a truly a crisis. Unfortunately, the constitutional amendment that we had that would have allowed us to provide incentives to developers of, of for affordable housing, that did not pass because it had to go statewide. We need to go back with that and continue to push that piece. The other piece is that of a living wage. You know, one of the reasons we're talking about affordable housing is because the wages are so low in this state. Uh, I am one who proposed a minimum wage for the state because unfortunately Louisiana does not have one. We also are prevented as a city from doing our own minimum or living wage because of preemption. I support that and I will be working with uh, uh, Representative DuPlessis who actually authored that bill last year. But I think we have to have that two-pronged approach to address that critical issue. All right, we're going to start this question with you. I told you all we get to a St. Bernard Parish question which is included in, in Senate District 3. The Port of St. Bernard is in that district. The Port of New Orleans has an expansion plan to go into St. Bernard Parish. Do you support that plan and what's your vision for that in 60 seconds? As the rep as the senator, excuse me, for both of those parishes, uh, what I would be interested in doing first and foremost is convening the leadership from the two parishes. My role as a senator and representative of those two parishes is to first and foremost bring them to the table and then let's talk about what are your visions for your parish and then we address that single piece to talk about how it best serves each of the parishes. It's not what I need in my vision is what the vision of the people are and how I work to facilitate their vision. All right, same question, Mr. Bregnaris. The Port of St. Bernard is in Senate District 3, the district that you're running for. New Orleans Port has an expansion plan that goes into St. Bernard. Do you support that project? And if elected, how do you help that project grow and maintain in 60 seconds? Yes, I do support that project. In fact, I think they're going to move that port down to the Violet Canal which brings about 2,500 jobs into that district. Um, I, had, I would work with the leaders down there to see where they're coming from and what they want to do. And as I said before, I'd like to appoint some St. Bernard person to the board, to the port board, so they can have an input and say so in what goes on down there. All right, let's go 60 seconds for another question. We'll start this with you, Mr. Bagnaris. Your district's very diverse. It's known to some in the State House as the octopus district, if you will, when you look at it, how it grabs different portions of Jefferson, Orleans, and St. Bernard. We have a census coming up in 2020. Reapportionment is going to be a big topic. What are your thoughts on reapportionment, and what do you think this district should look like after the 2020 census? Census, you have 60 seconds to answer that question. As I said, it was a double-edged sword for St. Bernard having two senators. They need to be in one senatorial district. My plan for it is to give up some of uh, New Orleans East to uh, Representative Harris and take some of his part of uh, the New Orleans East district, phase out Jefferson Paris, keep St. Bernard in, because St. Bernard does not have enough population to have their own senatorial district. Uh, after that, we'll see what the numbers say, and we'll work the plan out. All right, same question, Mr. Bowie. In 60 seconds, reapportionment is going to be a big topic after 2020. What are your thoughts on how District 3, Senate District 3, the seat you're running for, should look like after reapportionment? Yes, 
The present condition of Senate District 3 is a direct result of gerrymandering. And unfortunately, in my opinion, the, the Supreme Court has said gerrymandering is legal. Uh, as, as one who does not hold that particular view, because I think it is really antithetical to the democratic process, because individuals should have their own rep. However, the process is much more difficult than that, because if you say you want to move certain numbers in one district, that particular rep or senator has to agree. And so it's not just, uh, I would like to do it this way. It means that you have to involve multiple individuals who actually represent those districts now. And so I would be willing to work to pull together the respective senators and reps of the district to see what best we can do to afford equity and representation to not just St. Bernard, but to all of the parishes that's a part of the present district. All right, we're going to start this question with you. Another 60 second answer. Lock expansion in the ninth ward at St. Claude at the St. Claude Bridge is a big topic. The Army Corps of Engineers is trying to do it right now, but they need a lot of community input. Where do you stand on that issue in 60 seconds on lock expansion at the St. Claude Bridge? The residents of, of that area in the Lower Ninth Ward are opposed to that piece. Because I will be a representative of that particular constituency group, I, I will carry the water for them. Uh, I'm sure there's a way we can address the piece in terms of what the Corps is ultimately trying to do. But when you have federal goals that actually do not take into account the local residents, I have a problem with it. So first and foremost, I carry the water for the residents and I'll be willing to work with the Corps of Engineers and also the governor would have a role in this as well to come up with the best solution that won't negatively impact the lower night ward and upper night ward to, to expand that particular lot. All right, Mr. Bignara, same question. Lock expansion in the lower ninth ward is a big topic, especially at the St. Claude Bridge, the Corps of Engineers trying to do it. Where do you stand on that? Do you support the lock expansion at the St. Claude Bridge? You have 60 seconds also. I stand with the community. They, need, they don't want it, and I'll work with them to see what we can do to stop it. Uh, the Corps of Engineers always has a problem with uh, the community and getting to them and talking with them and working out the problem. Uh, I don't think that the governor has any kind of head stroke with that because we have a Republican president and a Republican uh, Senate, so they're going to vote for whatever our de delegation tells them to do. And we have to go in and fight this with real. I'm with the community and wanting to stop this. All right, we're going to start this question with you. We're going to go to a 30 second question just to squeeze some more in here. A 30 second answer, I should say, although it may take me 30 seconds to ask the question. Community colleges are in District 3. Delgado Satellite Campus in the Ninth Ward, as well as Nunez Community College. There have been big cuts to education. In 30 seconds, Mr. Bagnaris, how do you protect those two community colleges? from cuts to higher education, if you're elected? I just was at Delgado for the new chancellor coming in, and she has a vivid plan of action that she wants to talk to me about, and we're gonna move forward to try to protect Delgado from the cuts. Um, Dr. Stive has a, a real record, a, a phenomenal record of being a, a good educator and good leader. I'm backing her in every, every situation you ask me to. All right. Same question. And let me say this. Go ahead. Uh, I, I'm, I'm all for schools, and our parents sent us to kindergarten to 12th grade, and I'm for secondary, post-secondary education, the Delgados and the uh, Sydney Colleges, because they are they, a kid who, met, who works in an oil refinery and make $80 an hour as a welder. All right, same question, Mr. Bowie. Two community colleges are in Senate District 3, Delgado Satellite Campus and Nunez Community College. If elected, how would you pre prevent those two community colleges from being cut? Well, fortunately, Travis, we actually ended the cuts in post-secondary yeah. education when we solved that $2 billion deficit. And as a, as a lifelong educator, obviously, I'm not only dedicated to doing that, but will ensure that we continue not to invert, if you will, the fun funding formula for post-secondary education. Right now, higher education was not cut uh, this year coming in, and as long as we continue to do what we're doing, we can maintain stable funding for those post-secondary ed education institutions. All right, final question before we do closing statements here. You all are both Democrats. You've been in the legislature. You've worked with the current governor, John Bell Edwards. None of us have a crystal ball, but let's go with an if. If a Republican, Eddie Rispone, is elected as governor in 30 seconds, 
How would you work with a Republican who's elected as governor? We'll start with you, Mr. Bowie, and then go with you, Mr. Bagnaris. Yeah, earlier I mentioned the fact that I had two very important leadership positions in the legislature, which afforded me the opportunity to work with both Republicans and Democrats. Uh, that's the same piece that we're facing now. In fact, uh, we actually have a supermajority in the Senate now. We have, we have actually 20 senators in the Senate who we're returning of, of the 39. Uh, we also have a huge turnover in the House, and actually we, we could have a supermajority in the House as of well. Of Republicans, is what you're talking of about. Of Republicans, right. yes. What that simply means is you must have now an experienced <laughs> legislature who has the relationships to be able to work with those Republican members to get things done. All right, same question, Mr. Bagnaris. You've worked with the current governor. You're a Democrat. He's a Democrat. If a Republican, Eddie Rispone, is elected in 30 seconds, how will you work with him as a Republican governor? Let me say this. I worked on a criminal justice committee where there were 12 Republicans and eight Democrats. We were able to pass the criminal justice reform. I talked people into the Republican people into voting for criminal justice. If you know anything about the legislature, you cannot do any bill unless it comes out of committee to go to the floor to get voted on. So I've worked both sides of the house. I know how to get things done. And my Republican friends that I know in the House will be there when I get there in the Senate. All right. We have a lot more questions. Unfortunately, you may not be able to get to them. We're going to do closing statements. Each one of you gentlemen will have a minute to make a closing statement. We'll go reverse order this time. We'll start with you, Mr. Bowie, and then go with you, Mr. Bagnaris. So, Mr. Bowie, you have one minute to make a closing statement. Thank you so much, Travis, and thanks once again for having us. Uh, as the floor leader for the governor and one who is a two-term legislative Black Caucus member, uh, we have some critical issues facing us this legislative session. I mentioned earlier that we will be losing 40 members in the House 19 members in the Senate. What we need is, is one who has experienced legislative leadership who can in fact work across the aisle. Because of my past experience in the legislature, I have the endorsements not only of J.P. Morrell, but more importantly, 44% of the people in District 3 uh, saw fit to vote for me in the primary. In addition to that, I picked up the endorsement of the individual from St. Bernard's Parish, Ms. Duty, who finished third, which simply says that folk respect and understand that my legislative experience can carry them and I can be the consensus candidate for District 3. Uh, my name is Joseph Bowie. I'm number 55 on the ballot, and I ask for your vote. And thanks again for your having us tonight. Thank you, Mr. Bowie. Mr. Bagnaris, you have 60 seconds to make a closing statement as well. I'm John Bagnaris, and I would like to take this opportunity to, to ask you to vote for the, and support me on November 16th for the Senate District 3. I'm running because it, it's time to put the needs of everyday people first over the wants of political insiders and special interests. I have worked in the hospitality industry, as most of the people in the city of New Orleans. That's how I make my living, pay my bills, and support my family through tourism. I am a blue collar worker in New Orleans roots as deep as the potholes. I want to go to the Senate to fight and give our children and grandchildren a 21st century education and give our teachers a pay raise where they can take care of their families. I will go to every day and work and assure to get those roads that we need. And lastly, I would like to bring jobs here so our children and grandchildren will not have to leave the city to get a good job, and we won't have to watch our children, grandchildren grow up on Facebook. I'm John Bagnaris, number 54, and I'm asking for your support on November 16th. Early voting starts November 6th. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the state of Louisiana. I can just skip when election day is and when early voting starts. <laughs> Thank you very much. State Representative John Bagnaris, State Representative Joe Bowie, you've been colleagues in the legislature for a while. You're actually good friends. Yes. Let the best man win next month. Thank you for your time. You. That's all the time that we have for the hot seat. This entire segment will be online starting on Monday.